As discussed earlier, quantitative data can be of two types, discrete and continuous. In this lecture, we will talk about discrete data and we will see how we can use frequency distribution to present discrete data. There are two types of frequency distribution that we can use to present discrete data. Ungrouped frequency distribution and grouped frequency distribution. In an ungrouped frequency distribution, various values of the variable are shown along with their corresponding frequency. If ungrouped frequency distribution fails to reveal any pattern, then we make another frequency distribution by grouping various observations. This type of distribution is called grouped frequency distribution. Let's take an example to understand this in detail. Suppose that a survey of 20 hotels was conducted and number of rooms in each hotel was recorded as shown below. The data in this form is called raw or disorganized data. This data is scattered and does not give us any useful information and is rather confusing to the mind sometimes. Our objective here is to express this data in a condensed form so that we could highlight the significant facts and make useful comparisons. Let's make an ungrouped frequency distribution to analyze this data. As just discussed, in an ungrouped frequency distribution, we write the various values of the variable along with their corresponding frequency in a tabular form. In the above example, our variable is the number of rooms. If we count how many hotels have 12 rooms, we get 1. Similarly, we can count how many hotels have 13 rooms, 14 rooms and so on. I have summarized these counts in the table presented here and this is what we call ungrouped frequency distribution. Here we observe that there are 3 hotels with 18 rooms, 2 hotels with 14 rooms and so on. The presentation of data in this form gives us more insight than the raw data. But still it does not condense the data much. Also, if your variable takes the values in a wide range, for example, if the number of rooms were in a range of 10 to 100, then it becomes quite cumbersome to comprehend the data. It may look something like this. So in these type of cases, we will have to process the data further for statistical analysis. Let's move on to grouped frequency distribution now. A grouped frequency distribution is used when ungrouped frequency distribution fails to reveal any pattern or is not able to condense the data much. It is also preferred when the possible values that a variable can take are large. For example, you may want to use a grouped frequency distribution if the number of rooms were in a range of 10 to 100. In a grouped frequency distribution, we divide the entire range of the values of the variable into a suitable number of groups. And these groups are called classes. Once we have made these groups, we then record the number of observations in each group. Let's continue with our example of 20 hotels with number of rooms as the variable to see how group frequency distribution looks like. As you can see, I have created five groups here. Or you can also say I have five classes here. Note that these classes are non-overlapping. The first class is 10 to 14. In this class, we have four observations as there are four hotels that have rooms between 10 to 14. The second class is 15 to 19. In this class, we have 8 observations. This is because we have 8 hotels with number of rooms between 15 and 19. And so on. This frequency distribution is more revealing than the ungrouped frequency distribution. 
Here we can observe that most of the hotels have rooms between 15 to 19 and there is only one hotel that has more than 30 rooms. Other conclusions are also possible depending on the interest of the person viewing the frequency distribution. It is important to note that there are some principles that you should keep in mind while forming a grouped frequency distribution. These principles will guide you in deciding how many classes to form, what should be the size of class intervals and many other things. I have covered these principles in my next lecture.